And the song we just heard comes from a, a very talented artist, a special friend to ours here on The Upper Room with Joe Kelly and G. Deso. It's from This Side of Paradise by Monty Moyer, keyboardist, extraordinaire, producer, member of the legendary time, and also a solo artist. And that is a song called I'm the One Who Loves You, which leads off this great CD. He's here with us right now when we're airing it. He's probably getting ready to go on stage in Atlantic City at Trump's Casino. But uh, he's visiting us right now for a chat. Monty Moyer, how you doing, Monty? Good, I'm doing great. How you doing, Joe? Pretty good. And, uh, you know, we record this a couple days before New Year's Eve. Are you working, uh, doing shows just about every New Year's Eve? Uh, every one. I think we might have missed one a few years back, but pretty much every year we're out. So. What would be uh, one or two of the most memorable shows you've done on New Year's Eve? Ah, uh, boy, I you know, they kind of go by so fast. <laughs> well, well, wasn't last year you you did the one with uh, Jesse Johnson coming on stage? Oh, yeah, yeah, we did uh, with in uh, Vegas. I think that was last year, actually, outside under the uh, the lights there by the, uh, I think it was the old horseshoe and that. Uh, Jesse came out at the last minute, um, just kind of popped up out of nowhere. I think Jerome might have talked to him, and um, he just came out and played, and it was great. I hadn't seen him. I don't think me and Morris were saying both. I don't think either of us had seen him for years. I couldn't tell you the last time I, we had both seen him and came out and it was great. We had a great time. He just set up his stuff and we went at it and it was a lot of fun. Now, now when someone returns from being away that long, do you guys corner the person if you want and say, hey man, when are you going to come and, and join us and play some more? You know, we had discussions about that, and uh, uh, we've had discussions earlier this year about trying to get more of the guys together. That, that it's, you know, it comes and it goes, and it ebbs and it flows, and it's 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 hard to say if that's really ever going to happen. And I guess I'm speaking of a reunion, trying to get all the guys back. But you know, it it does get talked about here and there, and but uh, you know, all of us would certainly welcome it. Well, you've been a founding member of the band when uh, the early days you were, you were in uh, Flight Time. Who who was in Flight Time back in the days in Minneapolis? Uh, flight Time went way back before I arrived, but when I was there, it was it was about five of us. Cynthia, excuse me, Cynthia Johnson was the lead singer when I first got in. Of course, she was of funky town fame. She now does a lot of jazz singing and stuff around town. Uh, and it was Terry and Jelly Bean, and a sax player named Monk, mm -hmm. a guitar player Tony Johnson, who's now a who's now a doctor. And now everybody's everybody's. And after that, Cynthia left, and then Alexander O'Neill came in, and oh, within a year and a half, the the time was up and running. So I really just got in on the tail end of the flight time, the flight time thing. But I know Terry and. Bean and them had started, I think, when they were around 12, 13 years old, and I didn't get there until I was probably first year of college, so I was probably 19, something like that. So, actually, uh, you were one of the, the few remaining Minneapolis musicians still still in town, and uh, I, who, who's still in town from, you know, the core of uh, the time in the Prince camp that, that at least you know of? original guys it's really just me and jellybean drones out in la morris is in atlanta of course terry and jimmy are in la now and jesse's in la so it's down to me and bean the last survivors up here you're, you're balancing uh you're balancing your solo career great album which came out uh this side of paradise with with the work with the time and how difficult it is you know people you know every time we see you asking about yeah, the upcoming album, what's going on. Uh, how about writing songs and producing songs when you've got so many other things going with the time and, and various other production things? How tough is it to write? Uh, it can be a little tough just trying to, you know, make time for everything, but it, it it's getting better. I'm getting a lot better at delegating my time, shall we say. <laughs> um, but it's getting there. I am working on a second CD now, just getting started with it and, 
don't really have a release date yet in mind, but I'm, I'm hoping for later this year. Now, Monty Moyer's website, you can go there, uh, Monty Moyer, M-O-I-R.com, M-O-N-T-E-M-O-I-R.com. M O I R dot com and it seems like you know you're you're the pipeline to getting all the the current time dates. I, I see your website quoted a, a lot on other people's sites. The time you you pretty much keep everybody uh, up to date, right? Of the band, I try to at least on the dates because I know we don't. Uh, I've heard about it a lot. Why we don't have a, an official time site, and I'm not quite sure why that is. But we just don't seem to have one. But so I try to keep up with all the dates and stuff. And we should get into another song right now from uh, Monty Morrissey, This Side of Paradise. He's our special guest with us as Gita Soul and myself here in the MPG Music Club chat room and online at upperroomwithjoekelly.com uh, here for the Minneapolis and Prince Music Special. Uh, we'll get into a song. Actually, this was my favorite off the record, but I, I got a new one, which we'll get uh, into a little later. But this I, I really love from the get-go for Want and Desire. Tell, tell us about writing this one uh for one and desire uh it was something i had kind of written previously to really before i got into working seriously on the cd and i had i had a different version of it and i revamped it a little bit um i suppose it's been told it's got a little bit more of an r&b-ish feel but it's i mean it's not really r&b in the true sense but i guess in the sense that i would do it um Bit about talking about some fears and things, um, but uh, like I say, it was one of the earlier ones that maybe got me started working on before the CD actually really got. There's a point, I guess, when you're writing when you're writing music and it, you really start to realize, okay, we got. There feels like there's a record happening here as opposed to just some singular songs, and and that was. It's another great one from singer, songwriter, producer. He's produced so many artists, which we'll talk a bit about. Uh, Mr. Monty Moyer for Want and Desire. And uh, we mentioned just now about your production work. Uh, did, you, did you do some stuff for Cheryl Lynn, too? Yeah, I did one song for her back when I was working with Flight Time. It was called Love's Been Here Before. Okay. It was a ballad. Um... And it was it was actually kind of fun because uh, we actually brought in a string section, and it was I believe the time around the time we were doing the Patty Austin record, two or at least three songs. I think I did one, and Terry and Jimmy did two. And I think for at least one of the Patty Austin songs and a couple of the, at least one of the Cheryl Lynn songs, we were able to use a small string section. So that that was really the first time I think for any of us that we did something like that. So that was, that was pretty cool. Now, how, how about, uh, I mean, you're working with your, your friends from the time and then their own production company, Jimmy Jam and Terry Lewis with Flight Time. What, what's the process of getting your song added on to some of their artists' record? And, and what's that feeling like when, you know, you win the battle like that? Back in the day when I was working with Terry, you mean? Yeah. How, how did that go about that, you know, your song was chosen to be on the record? How does that usually um, work out? It, it it was actually when it started up, it was really a nice setup. I mean, I, I'm very thankful to the opportunities they gave me because they really just they had so much work going on at the time, and uh, of course they still do. But their workload was really starting to pick up, and they and they brought me in and asked me if I wanted to produce some stuff, and I certainly uh, took them up on the offer. And a lot of a lot of our arrangements was well we've got X amount of songs they want to produce for X artist and they would say here you've got one song and we're going to do the other three or you've got two we got two or we're going to do the whole SOS album and you can do a couple over here and I pretty much had a lot of free reign just to do whatever I wanted to do really which was which was pretty cool I know the business so much isn't that way anymore and um. So it was nice. We'd come together and, and at, at the end and Jam might come in and add a part or I'd come in and maybe sing some backgrounds and some stuff they were working on and it would all get mixed at the same time pretty much. And uh, of course there was, you know, they'd want to hear some songs before before I actually started recording them, but um, I pretty much got green-lighted on everything, just about everything anyway. So, 
And I was only there for about a year and a half, too. So it was, it was a handful of projects, but, but it was a great experience. And you contributed, uh, I, th- I think, about three tracks to one of Alexander's records, which was which, a good portion of the record, which was nice. Yeah, his first, his first record, uh, that, those were on. And uh, it was great to see Alex get a deal. Um, we had been working with another singer, and it didn't seem like it was working out too well. And, and uh, well, he's a wonderful guy. Just at the time, it wasn't working out so well. So we talked to Clarence Avant, at, at, who was running Taboo, and said, man, there's this guy in, in Minneapolis who's just a killer singer. And, and he, he, we had him start singing some tracks, and we were off and running from there. So Monty Moyer is here with us on the upper room, and uh, one day we'll release that interview box set down the road when probably you and me are long gone. <laughs> yeah. yeah, there you go. Yeah, I know there's a market out there for us. Yeah, somewhere, right? <laughs> right. No, no. All all joking aside, uh, you know, you guys are going to be in Atlantic City at Trump's Casino. Um, Showtime around ten thirty. Uh, is Taylor Dane on the bill? That's what I heard. Yeah, from what I understand, she is. So it should be a fun night. I think we go in around 10.30, from what I understand, and probably bring in the New Year. So now, the, the, t- the time uh, was in New York for uh, two shows at B.B. King's Blues Club, and then the following evening they performed a great show at Mohegan Sun, where we were here in Connecticut. Um, as, as an artist, and, and how do you prepare yourself for, like, I mean, I've DJed, like, three parties in two days, but, I mean, you guys are up there moving and, how, how do you uh, gear up for that? Uh, you know, it's kind of like getting ready for a game, I suppose. You know, there's a, little, there's a little quiet time before you go down, but then once we get into the dressing room backstage, and everybody's pretty loose and pretty happy, and and that that uh, pretty much contributes to how how we get going on stage. And you know, we've been doing this a long time as well, so there's a lot of familiarity that comes with the whole thing. And uh, I, I guess we feel good about what we're doing, and it's it's just we just try to go out and have a good time and keep the energy up, and and you know, do the best we can. Now, the time, of course, great performers, and uh, you know, you talked about you enjoy what you're doing. You could see the camaraderie between you guys, especially the Minneapolis guys who were down there at the beginning. You know, you've got that. Uh, little Minneapolis group. I forget which song it, it's in. It's kind of an instrumental thing. Um, I'm not sure what you're speaking of. When, when there's like a, a breakdown, I don't know if it's during Ice Cream Castles. Um, oh, Ice Cream, yeah, we do kind of a little extended thing. Right, right. We got going to a bit of a, a different groove for a little bit there, yeah. Now, now the time the time hasn't released an official studio album for quite a while. How how important it is, is it for the guys at at this point to to eventually have one come out, or you know, you guys just see uh, continuing as it is? Well, I know I know for certain that you know everybody would love to get another record out, and, and we'd really like to get one with all the original members and 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 do it as such and. We've had talks. We've had some talks earlier this year with everybody, actually, and it's everybody seems to want to do it, but we just haven't been able to either get people scheduling or, or get the thing moved along far enough to to really get some momentum with it. But, uh, you know, I guess we've been saying it for years, Well, hopefully we can get something together, but this has always seemed like it's been a bigger beast than just one of us. It, it seems like it somehow takes the planets to align up to get everybody going in the same direction on things and you know, hopefully it'll happen soon but it, it's hard to say really so i guess the the little intro in the beginning of the, of the show is about the takes we're going to get of it so far well for the moment but you know we we hope to start changing some more things up next year and stuff mm-hmm. and, and just breathing some more life into this thing and and like i say you know we really have hopes that we can get something going and 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 uh, and I know that that's been talked about over the years, and we haven't got there yet. But you know, we're, we're trying, and we'll see what happens. But it takes a lot. You know, we're gonna we'd like Prince to be involved. We'd like everything everybody to be involved. So we'll just have to see what happens. You know, we've been trying to do it for a long time, and, and uh, I guess we'll just see. But so why don't we get into uh, another track off the record, "This Side of Paradise" from Monty Moyer. Um, 
we've got all right by me queued up and uh th- there's a nice feel to it up tempo tell tell me about this one and, and writing it and you're playing most of the instruments on this one too right yeah pretty much i think um it's got more of a, I guess, a little bit of a change up from the rest of the record. All the, the rest of the record is fairly spread out. I think uh, sonically, it's a bit more of a Tex Mex kind of beat. Somebody has said Paul Simon, or it's, it almost feels like a polka beat to me. But coming from Miss Elda, that's all I heard growing up half the time. Um, just. Uh, it's fairly autobiographical about somebody I knew back when, in which I guess most of my stuff tends to be fairly personal. So, um, do you send them? Yeah. Do you send them copies of the record? <laughs> <laughs> no, not usually. Because I'm not sure if everybody'd be very thrilled that they'd they'd hear things, you know, right. of what they'd hear. But uh, you know, everybody's been pleasant so far, so. Yeah, so that, that's cool. Monty Moore is with us here on the Upper Room on uh, New Year's Eve right here. We're here in the MPG Music Club, and uh, Monty will be back with us. If you're uh, going to see Monty tonight in New Jersey, um, I'm sure you're going to see a great show. That's from Monty Moyer, This Side of Paradise, All Right by Me. Joe Kelly here, G. so as well, and uh, Monty's with us. Uh, actually, we're recording this a couple days before their big New Year's Eve party in uh, Atlantic City at the Trump Casino, and the time will be there. Of course, Monty on keyboards, and uh, look for Monty in stylish clothes. You know, if you're in Minnesota, uh, I believe the Minnesota Historical Society has uh, a bunch of your uh, your wardrobe there, fedora hat and shoes you've donated. You know, part of history, right? Uh, I guess so. Yeah. yeah. Uh, a bit of an honor that they even asked some of us to donate some things, but yeah, they've got some stuff on display. I think it's going to be up for five or six years, now, pretty much chronicling the Minnesota music scene. I mean, not just the, the Minneapolis sound and all that, but they go back to uh, all of the polka bands and all the you know the rural music, and it, it's really pretty comprehensive as far as its coverage, but. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Pretty cool. Now, you guys created your own style way, way back in the uh, early 80s. Um, where did you buy the suits back then, and, and where do you buy the suits now? Back then, we started out, and of course, when you're first starting out, nobody's got any money, and we would go to the vintage stores around town, actually around the country once we got touring, but there was in one place in particular was called Tatters, uh, I was downtown, or just off of downtown Minneapolis. I guess close to uptown. I guess I would, I would say, and we'd go in there and buy old vintage stuff off the rack. And of course, it was very cheap. And as we'd go around the country too, we'd be in New York or something and buy, look for old vintage places and, and, and buy stuff. And it was, it was really how we got our look started. And um, later on, you know, around the graffiti bridge area. And the, era on that we had some a lot of suits made for us and it's it's probably a combination of both right now buying stuff you find or sometimes having stuff made so we try to keep up a little bit so so when you're touring uh between the with shows what do you like to do if you're in town enough um i like to watch a lot of movies um in fact i'm, I'm becoming more interested in in looking at some soundtrack stuff but um, I like being in the studio a lot. I've got, I've got my daughter. I love spending time with her. Um, I, I'm not a real big club guy, but I just I like to hang out with friends a lot, really, and, that, and that's that's a lot of my time, friends, family. Now, when we got uh, to hang out with you uh, recently in Connecticut, we you know talked about uh, and Tori was on the show a few weeks ago talking about the musicology tour. He 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 was still pumped about that. Um, you talked about your daughter and had a chance to be on tour with Musicology and, and see you up there and meet meet uh, Lenny Kravitz and or she missed Lenny Kravitz, right? I uh, know she met Lenny and uh, Denzel as well, so it was pretty fun, I think. How, how about yourself? I mean, you know, us meeting you guys. You know, you get the butterflies when you first meet you guys. You know, our musical 
heroes. How about yourself along the the road? Did you ever have a, a few butterflies meeting certain people that might have been your favorite stars? Um, yeah, over the years, so here and there. I remember when we first played in Long Beach back in the old days, and, and uh, uh, I, we were on stage, and I actually didn't get to meet him, but um, everybody said Stevie was there. Stevie was there, you know, and I was, and I just we started playing, and I just happened to look behind me, and about literally five feet behind me, Stevie was sitting on a chair, you know, doing the Stevie thing, and it was, and it was, uh, it was pretty cool. It was, and I remember being as well. And in, in, uh, well, over the years, I guess we've met a lot of people. But American Music Awards, we were at one year. That was that was pretty thrilling. I think that right after the first year we came up, I think we were up for R and B Band of the Year, New R and B Artist or something. Um, yeah, we've had some some real cool experiences. And musicology being on those surprise dates uh, must must have been amazing. I mean, practically uh, twenty years since Purple Rain, and you're, you're seeing a bunch of different people and some of the old audience there. What what was it like for you playing the arenas? Again, uh, with your old buddy Prince. It was wonderful. You know, it, it brought back some of the old memories because we used to do a lot of the arena dates with him back in the day. And it was interesting. We, you know, we'd come out and a lot of times he, we wouldn't be announced and, and we would start up and you could see people in the front row. They were expecting him and they would look at us and some would have kind of confused looks on their face and some would be real excited and but, you know, once we got rolling, everybody was pretty excited about it. But it was it was a lot of fun to do, you know, and, and, and the Prince was very gracious to have us out there. And he did make mention at his uh, four-minute and few seconds press conference. I don't know if you caught that. Um, but he did make mention he'll be going back on tour. But the only details were he'll be inviting some of his old friends along. Yeah, I did hear that. And, uh, you know, who knows what that means. Yeah. I mean, obviously, we would love to do some dates with him again, and he knows where we are, and he and he knows where we we're there to support him in whatever way we can. Um, and uh, well, I guess we'll see, but we've we've heard nothing yet, and I, that doesn't surprise me. I mean, I'm sure it'll be a while before he even gets near going on the road, but I, I suspect they're talking about this spring sometime. Right uh, now. What's it like? Uh, you, you've got uh, a guy out in Australia who uh, actually covered two of your songs from this side of paradise, uh, "Everyday Living" and uh, "This Side of Paradise," right? Yes. Uh, Owen Gray. How how did he uh, contact you, and how did you, you know, get affiliated with him? It's through a mutual friend of ours. His name is Neil Richards. He does a lot of work down in Australia with uh, some artists, and he does a lot of management down there. And I've known him for. A number of years, and um, he just called up one day, and he said he had played Owen some some of my record, and Owen was uh, decided he wanted to record a couple of them. So it was it was just like that, really. His record came out earlier this year, I think, this spring or this summer. Yeah, I think it's uh, Mumbo Jumbo, something like that. Yeah, it's kind of a New Orleans sort of bluesy kind of. It's nice stuff. It's really nice stuff. He's a nice, nice guy as well. Well, just a few days ago, we uh, rediscovered online uh, another one of the guys you you uh, produced a uh, bunch of tracks on his record, Junior Just Come Junior. Um, how, how did you guys get in the studio and, and work on his music? Oh, I think it was back when he was with Polygram, and somehow through the label, they, they hooked us up, and I think we were... He was just going to come over and do one song, and we ended up doing three, something like that. We became great friends, and in fact, when I when I was got married years ago, um, I, I jokingly said I was going to send him an invitation to the wedding, and he lived his, he lives in England, you know, and he's uh -huh. like, I'll be there, and I thought, yeah, right, you know, and I, he sure he sure enough showed up, and we've been great friends ever since, but we've lost contact for a while, and with your help, we, we're just going to be able to get in contact again. So uh, yeah. I'm really looking forward to that. He's, he's a great guy and a great musician and a great singer. And you're both indie artists now, so maybe some collaborations. Who knows? Who knows, yeah. I would be up for anything with him. Right. He's, he's a wonderful guy. 
So uh, New Year's Eve's coming up. Um, we're, we're airing this interview New Year's Eve, but you'll be uh, getting ready to go on stage. And uh, how, how about your, for musician fans, when you when you do a time gig, what what keys do you have uh, on stage for you? Is it the same every show? The same what? Same keyboards. What, what's your setup um, personally on on stage? Pretty much the same. On my set, I'm using a, 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 a what am I using? PC eighty eight for you know piano stuff, and then we've got a Nord lead for a lot of the you know the old kind of taking the place of the old Oberheim OB eight sounds, and it's really pretty good for that. I've got a JPX or a a JP8000 for the uh, middle keyboard, just kind of filling up some pads and stuff. Pretty much the same thing every time, but you know, the old sound was built off of uh, the old Oberheim, the OBX or the OB8s, and, and you know, we certainly have to try to stay true to that sound, and the Nordleads have been pretty close with that, and they hold up well on the road, too. So, uh, How about... Uh of all the time catalog and songs you still do live, what what's the most challenging for you? I mean, you you can play them in your sleep, but how about as a keyboardist? What's what's the biggest challenge? Song wise, um, well, I'll probably get it up or something like that. I, you know, it, it, I, we've been doing these songs so long now that that they've you know we've been doing them since eighty one, I guess, off and on. So a lot of it becomes second nature. To all of us, you know, I, I I do know Bean is still working hard on seven seven seven. I mean, he's he's still got to be paying attention on that one. I tell you that. But, and I saw the last last show, Jelly Beans. I, he doesn't have a microphone back there, but he's singing during the song. Some of them. He sure does. You yeah. know, you can you can. I don't know if you can hear it off stage, but I think I can't really hear him where I'm at. And I'm right next to him, but it, it's usually pretty loud on stage. But. Yeah, Bean has always been fully engrossed in the show, and you know he's just he's just a wonderful guy, great drummer too. Now I know you, uh, Chance Howard has been doing shows with you, but uh, Jeff Jeff uh, was with you guys in Connecticut. Is Chance still over in Europe? He's back now. He was out with Candy Dell for for about a month, and he's going to probably be back with us. He, if he's not out, you know, doing that stuff, or if he doesn't go out with the Prince Dates, he usually comes back and plays with us. So. He's always welcome, you know. He's, he's always got a home here. So, well, I'm, I'm going to go out right now with uh, a few from Monty Moyer right now. We're going to also be delving into his production catalog, Janet Jackson and Alexander O'Neill. But um, this is my new favorite off the record, "Save Your Love for Me." You also have, uh, I believe, Kurt Jones is on this one, right? Yeah, Kurt Jones. He's from the uh, Aura Slave days. He was in Aura, you know, "Make Up Your Mind" and all that stuff right. in the early '80s, and he. Was Originally got started in Slave way back when, probably longer than he'd care me to talk about, but <laughs> care for me to talk about. <laughs> right, right. But we did a record back in 86 with this group Deja. We uh, produced and we, we wrote up here in Minneapolis. And we became really good friends, and he's one of my closest, dearest friends. And he was he was on it, and Esther Godinez did a couple things as well. And, and uh, yeah, just great musicians. And then we'll uh, play the title track, This Side of Paradise. And i got to thank you, Monty. Always your great friend and, and kind to our show. So, you know, have a great show and uh, turn it out in Atlantic City. Well, thank you, Joe. And thank you once again for your support. It's always been great, especially for us up here in Minneapolis. You've been nothing but wonderful. Oh, I'll slip in one more plug for a uh, time date. Uh, January, you're playing at uh, Brooklyn Academy of Music, I think? Yeah, that's what I hear. So montymoyer.com is where you can get this side of paradise. Also, uh, the latest time dates at M O N T E 